The next wave of pension misery came about not through fraud or regulatory interference, but by something that no government can control, the decline and crash of the world's equity markets. In London, there was the biggest one-day fall for 10 years, at one stage wiping £38 billion off the value of Britain's leading firms. UK households now have indirect equity holdings of over £2 trillion through pension funds and investments such as life insurance. Their financial well-being is affected by what happens in international stock markets, meaning economic downturns have a direct impact on the pensions of ordinary people. With investment risk, if the stock market falls, you will be a victim. And since you're up close to retirement, you don't have enough time for the stock market to recover. A further vulnerability for many personal pensions is that once a pensioner reaches retirement, the regular payments from the fund, the annuity, are determined by the prevailing interest rates. If interest rates are low, the annuity will be low and you'll be permanently locked in to a low amount of uh, pension in retirement. So that's a double whammy. People had lulled themselves into a false sense of security, which sort of thought, well, it'll all be all right and the markets will do OK, and if I save a bit more, I'll be fine. And that's all been taken away because even those who did save and even those who thought they had good pension funds are finding that they're struggling. There is now a widening gap between what people expect and require from a pension and what they receive. Increasing longevity, more regulation, volatility, the impact on, on the company's accounts, all these things are conspiring to make pension schemes expensive. One word answer as to why there has been a demise of final salary pension schemes is cost. <laughs> They simply can't afford to run them anymore. During the boom of the 1980s, many company schemes grew so fast that firms chose not to invest as much as was prudent or dipped into their funds to take short-term profit. Now, after a decade of low returns, they have become too expensive to run. Meanwhile, the state sector pension has fared equally poorly. The Labour government introduced means testing to target those most in need, though this has become a disincentive for many to save on their own. It has lifted a lot of people out of poverty. From that point of view, it has benefited a great many people, me included. But it is a very unfair system because the people who have paid in for a pension and get a sum of money per week which added to their state pension, lifts them above the £130, have to pay all sorts of things themselves, like their rent and their council tax and spectacles, whereas the people who are on means-tested benefit get those things free. So it, be it becomes completely mad. It it's upside down. The people here who have paid all their lives in for, in for pension, if they haven't got a private pension or much in savings, they have to have been means tested to be able to live. I think that's a national disgrace. This means testing should go. If they've saved, then good. They've got that on top. Um, but basically, everybody should have a decent state pension and shouldn't be means tested. I think when you're old and you've worked hard, and most of them, we all certainly have, um, you're entitled to a decent standard of living and you don't get that on the British pension. <laughs>